This video introduces you to the programming concept of repetition structures, which are also called loops. In this module, you will learn to recognize decision types and flowcharts, differentiate between selection structures and repetition structures and flowcharts, and be familiar with basic repetition structure terms and definitions. Decisions make your code more powerful. In flowcharts, diamonds designate decisions and can be used to identify a programming structure. We use three types of structures in this course. First are straight path structures. These have no decisions, so no diamonds. The code in a flowchart like this will execute each line of code in the same sequence it was written. Next are selection structures. Selection structures are when the code selects one path out of multiple choices. There are always at least two possible paths, but there can be as many as required by the problem. Selection structure flowcharts contain at least one diamond. That diamond has one entry and two possible exit points, one for true and one for false, which will be the outcome of a conditional logic statement. The third structure is a repetition structure. Repetition structures repeat a set of commands on a path before returning to the main path. A repetition structure will contain a decision and the decision will decide if the program runs the repeated commands or not. The diamond in the flowchart will have two entry points and two exits. Another name for a repetition structure is a loop because the program loops back to the decision to repeat its commands until some condition is met. Let's focus only on structures with decisions, so selection and repetition structures. It is important that you can distinguish between the two using only their flowcharts so that you can properly interpret code that you must read or write. The decisions have some similarities, but the differences are key to recognizing the correct structure and how it operates. You should have already watched a video that explains selection structures, their variations, and what their flowcharts and code look like. Review that if you are not comfortable with selection structures. This video is only going to briefly discuss them so we can contrast them with repetition structures. Let's follow the flow through a sample algorithm that contains a selection structure. Begin at the start oval and run the first parallelogram and first rectangle. At the decision, which starts the selection structure, run a command that checks a logic condition. If that condition check is true, follow the true path, run any commands on that path, then return to the main path at the selection's end. Then complete any remaining commands in the algorithm. You can see we skipped the rectangle on the false path directly below the diamond. That path was not selected, so its commands did not run. Let's start over and run through our flowchart, assuming a false outcome to the decision. Start at the oval, run the first parallelogram and the first rectangle to reach the decision. If the decision outcome is false, follow the false path, run any commands on that path, and then return to the main path at the end of the selection structure. Complete any remaining commands in the algorithm. This time, we skipped the commands on the true path, so those commands did not run. And also remember, in a selection structure, the end command is the location where all the branches reconnect to the main path. It is not marked with an extra shape. We've seen that this example has two possible paths that the program could follow. A key thing to notice, the flow always continues moving in one direction towards the stopping point of the algorithm. While it might seem like you can see a closed rectangle, it is actually just the convergence of all potential paths back to the main path. The program can only follow one of these potential paths when it runs. Let's use a map of walking routes as an analogy. Imagine you are at the Purdue Memorial Union and you want to walk to the Corac. It is not a straight path to get there. Do you start walking towards University Street where you must make a choice? Do you want to go west down First Street, then north on Jiski Drive? Or do you want to go north on University Street and then turn west onto Third Street? You decide to turn up University and turn west onto Third Street. At the Black Cultural Center, you have another choice to make. Do you continue on 3rd Street and then turn north onto Jiski Drive? Or do you want to cut between the BCC and Winifred Parker Hall and then turn towards Wiley Dining Court with a straight walk up to the entrance? You decide to cut between the buildings. On the map, we can see the possible paths you could have taken alongside the path you did take. Maybe on a different day, you would have decided on a different route, but today you took this one. This is how flow works in a selection structure. Decisions present paths. You can only select one path. Unchosen paths are not used, but they are available if needed later or for a different reason. Now let's walk through a flowchart that contains a repetition structure, which we will call a loop from now on. In our sample flowchart, the flow goes like this. 
First run the parallelogram and the rectangle. Then at the decision, which starts the loop, run a command that checks a condition that has a true or false answer. If the answer is true, enter the loop and run the commands inside it. Return to the decision and check the condition again. Is the condition still true? If yes, re-enter the loop, run the commands inside, and return to the decision. Check the condition again. Still true? If yes, then run the loop again. Keep repeating this process until the condition in the decision becomes false. When that happens, the program exits the loop and moves down the false path where it completes any commands remaining in the algorithm. We can see how the looping of the commands happens. The same decision is checked over and over. We call the completion of one cycle through the loop an iteration or a pass. You will hear the word iteration a lot in this course. The total number of iterations is the total number of times that the loop runs. There are two types of loops in MATLAB. You can have a loop where you know the number of iterations when you write the program. This is called a definite loop. In MATLAB, you use the FOR command for a definite loop, so they are also called FOR loops. The decision in a definite loop always checks to see if the loop has repeated for the specified number of iterations. You can also have a loop where you do not know the number of iterations when you write the program. Instead, you want the loop to execute until it achieves some criteria. This is called an indefinite loop because the loop can run as many iterations as necessary to achieve its goal. In MATLAB, you program an indefinite loop with the while command, so indefinite loops are also called while loops. The decision in an indefinite loop always checks the state or value of a variable that is acted upon inside the loop using a logical condition. That means the value changes each iteration of the loop until it meets its goal. When the loop meets its goal, the logic statement becomes false. Each loop type has its own syntax and flowchart setup. You can find links to the course videos for while loops and for loops in the video description. Let's use the map analogy for loops. You are at the co-rec and decide you want to go for a run. You leave the co-rec and go to the engineering mall. Once there, you will make a decision to run some number of laps around the mall. After the laps, you will head to the union. If you know exactly how many laps to run, then you are thinking like a definite loop. You know how many times you will go around the mall before you get there. You ask a question at the beginning of each lap. Have I run fewer than my required number of laps? If yes, run another lap. If no, stop running laps and go to the union. If you decide that you will run laps until you get tired, then you are thinking like an indefinite loop. The question you ask at the beginning of each lap is, do I have enough energy to run the next lap? If yes, run the lap. If no, stop running laps and go to the union. In this example, each lap is equivalent to an iteration. This is like how flow works in a loop. You encounter a decision. If its outcome is true, complete a task and then return to the decision to recheck the outcome. Continue this process, which repeats the same task each time until the decision outcome is false. Let's review the terms we've learned in this video. A loop is a coding structure that repeats a set of commands until a condition is met. Loops are also called repetition structures. An iteration is one complete run through the loop. The total number of iterations equals the number of times the loop runs. A definite loop is a loop that repeats its commands for a predetermined number of iterations. And an indefinite loop is a loop that repeats its commands as long as a logic condition remains true. From this module, you should be able to recognize decisions in flowcharts. They are represented by diamonds. You should be able to differentiate between selection structures and loops when reading flowcharts. Look at the diamonds. Are the paths returning to the diamond or not? And you should be familiar with basic loop terms like iteration, definite loop, and indefinite loop.